we fill. And don't ever see this as a waste of time and resources, because believe you me, it isn't. One, two, three. It's going to be a very rough shape. One, two, Okay, fill that and then start a new shape here. Highlight that object, no stretchiness. Turn it off. Okay, I'll put it into non digitizer view. Pick up my tool. One, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to impress you with the fact that I can count higher than three. You notice in all the other vids I get up to nine and then I shut up. <laughs> ah. I just alter these shapes a bit. Ah. Close that one off there. Right. And go and turn that stretchiness lights off. Okay. Marry the two of those together. Now, first of all, I want to do the run. Okay. Now, you saw we had a couple of seams in there mainly because we've got an awkward shape. But before I do anything about that, I'm going to close this. Oh, excuse me. Reshape. I'm going to end it up there. That's one. I've got an overlap at the bottom, which I didn't want. Click that one. Pull this one back. I don't want any overlaps. I put the start point up the top, but that's where the last one finished. I put the end point at the bottom. I tell that OK. So you quickly run that through. Right. Highlight the two of those. Tell them group. Temporarily. Right click. Drag. Right click. Come on. Let me get down there. Drag. Right click. Drag. Now you'll notice I'm not doing any of these teeny. I want the effect. I want you to see the effects. Make them too small. You're not going to see them. Tell that close for a minute. Highlight that one. Highlight that one. And this really works for me, but we will give it a go. Ungroup. See? It worked. Go into Object Reshape. This time, turn your angle. One. This side. Now, I haven't altered the stitch density. I've only altered the angle. This is all running in the one direction. Can you see those ridges running down here? They're all running in the same direction. This one, they aren't. They're running this way. They're running. That one's running that way. That one's running this way. It's making a chevron. I want you to come down to this one, go into Object Details, and I want you to tell this one stitch spacing of 4.3. You can leave the stitch length. Edge run and weave is fine. Stretchiness allowance. Make it 20. That should be 0.2. OK. This one, object details, 
one, two, three. Stretchiness, point two, point two. Go into object reshape and one angle there. Five degrees on that side. Click on this side. Ninety five on that side. I'm opposing the angle on that side. That's how that one stop. Okay, this one. One, two, three, four, five. Stretchiness. Point three. No, actually we'll double it, point 0.4. OK. This time, let's be a little nasty and stick 175. No, I don't like that. I like the I had a program which gave me the full compass points so that I could work everything out. That was 119. Now I need to come back on this side. And 90 from 119 is 21. Is that right? Little voice in the distance says no to me. Right. I've forgotten how much the other side was. 119. Minus 90. Equals 29. I was close. I was only 8 out. 29. There we go and set the stretchiness allowance on that. Stretchiness, 0.3. There we go. And click off that. Colours, red, green. And I want you to stitch those, because nowhere in any of these have I put any underlaps or overlaps. And I don't want you to either. I want you to see what happens when all you use is the program's stretchiness allowance. No stretchiness on these. 20% stretchiness on these. Ah, that was 20%. I think this one was 30% and stitch those out and see what happens when you don't have overlaps and you don't um, have a stretchiness allowance. Okay, and I want to see photographs. Now you notice I haven't outlined any of these. Outline. Okay, there you go, there's our outlines. Now, I've created the outlines after all the greens have stitched. I didn't do it for each individual, one, each individual one. I also want you to look at what happens when you keep the outlines till last. So, off you go. Get busy. None of this is a waste of stabilizer, threads or time. And I want you to monitor the stitch outs. I'm fed up of people saying, oh, I turn my machine on and the design takes however long and so I go off and do something else. No, you monitor your machine. You never walk away from an embroidery machine and just leave it chuntering away on its own. Quite apart from the fact if anything happens, you could jigger up your machine completely. It's not a good idea because if, if something is going to happen, if you're there and you're monitoring it, you can spot it. 
Secondly, if you're digitizing your own designs, you've got to see the trouble points as they stitch so as you can record them and then alter your designs to take care of it. Now, I'm not saying any of you do it, but it's not a good idea. Now, I don't want any of you to think that you can just go and sit on another machine while your embroidery machine is chuntering away or even worse still, go out in the kitchen and prepare dinner. Forget it. Clear your timetable so as you have time to monitor your designs, particularly if they are ones you have digitized yourself. You've got to see the trouble spots. You've got to know as they're developing. You've got to hear the needle as it's struggling with a particularly dense part. And if you don't monitor, you don't know they exist. Right, that's it for this little series.